is an isotope problem. We have 24, 25, and 26 of mag uh, magnesium. You pretty much have an unlimited number depending on what the isotope problem is. So we did one with mercury and I think I had like seven of them. It can get even worse than that, but uh, the number of them doesn't necessarily make it hard. Uh, this kind of question makes it hard. So when you're not solving for the molar mass of magnesium, in which case you just, this times this plus this times this plus this times this equals your final answer for magnesium, your answer would be 24.31 because it's from the periodic table. In this case, you're working backwards. So there's a degree of difficulty just because you're working backwards. So in this case, what we're doing is we're taking this column times this column, this times this, this times this, and we're gonna sum them all up. And I don't know if they gave it to you, but uh, sometimes they'll give you more digits than what I'm reading on the periodic table here. You probably look in the back of your book and get at least one more digit in there. But it's approximately 24.31. U is going to be, if you added them up, what you'd get. So the problem is right now I have two unknowns, this one and that one. Well, this one is most easily resolved. Does anybody know how? Yeah. Okay, you're geniuses. Okay, 100 minus these two numbers. Does anybody know that? 11 point? There we go. So this percentage, remember you change these to fractions before adding. And so now Crystal, it's just a matter of having one unknown. The software, is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Oh, not bad. <laughs> you sure? Yeah. This is a very typical way to write a test question too. If it's not finding this, which will usually give you to a lot of digits, it's finding one of these in here. Like I could have, if there were two of them, I could have just not given you the percentage, which you'll see on some of the practice exams.